buying local, especially when it comes to your magical supplies. So if you're looking for grimoires, decks, jewelry, candles, or herbs that are locally sourced, then come on down to Megas Books and Herbs. Curated for your ritual, ceremonial, spiritual, and spell work needs, we've got all the tools to make your working extra. So make that prosperity ritual one that keeps on giving by visiting us at 1848 Central Avenue Northeast in Minneapolis, or visit us online at megasbooks.com. Have you ever met someone who not only can help you on a deep spiritual level, but also potentially change your life? Refined Divine is an extremely gifted psychic medium who travels the nation and lives right here in the Midwest. And she offers mediumship, mentorship, house and business parties, energy healing, palm readings, and so much more. Refined Divine has helped thousands and she can help you. Hi, this is Psychic Medium Deb. I cannot wait to hear from you. You can go to refinedivinepsychic.com. With a look at your AM 950 weather, I'm Patrick Lilia. Partly cloudy tonight with a low of 34, then Wednesday sunshine with a high of 59. For more than 40 years, the Great Wall Restaurant has been serving up Szechuan and Mandarin favorites. The Great Wall is located just north of 50th in France on the Minneapolis Edina City Line. Check them out at greatwallrestaurant.us. Portions of the following program may be pre recorded. Unknown. <laughs> There are things people experience but never talk about. A shadow moving in the corner, flickering of the lights, a disembodied voice. We invite you to talk with us, share your story, share your experience, because this isn't just your story, this is our story. This is Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bakken. And this is Ghost Box Radio on AM 950, where every night we talk about the paranormal, UFOlogy, Bigfoot, and so much more. My name is Greg Bach, and thank you very much for joining us on this Tuesday evening. And, uh, you know, I'm going to get right to it, because this is actually one of my favorite subjects and very topical, uh, especially this time of year. Um, I have done a bit of this sort of work myself, and I want to take you back uh, uh, some time ago uh, when I was a kid, and I was living in St. Anthony Village. Uh, in Minnesota, just over by Roseville, New Brighton, over by Minneapolis. And uh, it was a Thursday night in April, as it happens, and uh, a tornado came through. And uh, it it started about uh, four miles from where I live, uh, taking out windows of, uh, of the church that I was a part of, St. Charles Borromeo. And then it moved north, and it cut through uh, most of St. Anthony, and it ended at a place that some may remember called Apache Plaza. And Apache Plaza uh, is, uh, was a, one of the first indoor uh, shopping malls. I think it even predated Southdale. And so it, it, it inflicted heavy damage to Apache Plaza. I was 10 at the time. And uh, it had a, an indelible mark on me. It's been with me for the rest of my life. It's, it's, it's taken it's uh it's not even a toll it's just it's just been a part of me it's 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 allowed me to have a of a, a you know a, a very strong viewpoint on the weather in general and i looked and i thought to myself like i said it's in april when when was that again and i looked it up so today is april 23rd it happened april 26th 1984 40 years ago, we're just about 40 years ago that that happened. And it's, it's, it's every aspect of that. And it did not damage my house that I grew up in. It did not damage my neighborhood. It, it hit about uh, seven to 10 blocks down from me. It killed somebody. But that night had changed my outlook on weather forever. Not in a bad way, but in one that it's a, it's a, it's a very healthy respect for the weather. And that's why it's been with me, and I, that's why I wanted to bring on uh, Justin tonight. Uh, Justin Wenzel has always had an interest in the weather for as long as he can remember. When he was young, it was a fear of severe weather, but as he grew older, it became more of an interest in wanting to understand more. 
As a kid, Justin would spend hours sitting in front of the TV watching the Weather Channel. During the storms, he would stare out the window, just waiting to see what would happen. Most times, it wasn't much. The first local tornado event that had an early impact on him was the devastating tornado that tore through southern Minnesota on March 29, 1998. Justin spent the entire afternoon watching the events unfold on the local news stations. His career highlights are tornadoes would be Dodge City in Kansas uh, in uh, May of 2016 and Stewart, Iowa in June of 2017. Justin's had news footage featured on all major news networks and have done several live shots of his footage and phone interviews on the Weather Channel, which I have seen myself. Uh, Justin has chased everything from tornadoes and severe thunderstorms, blizzard, northern lights, and wildfires in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Justin, welcome to Ghost Box Radio. Yeah, thanks for having me, Greg. <clears throat> thank, thank you very much for being on. You know, there is something about, uh, for me personally, and I'm, I'd really like to know your take on it, because I feel like that we've had kind of similar backgrounds in the sense of like, even back in the day, even before that tornado incident happened in my life, there was always something about uh, getting uh, tornado warnings and getting even even just being in a watch. You know, a watch doesn't mean that uh, that you're going to get a tornado or any of that stuff. But there was something about that that was really uh, always captivating to me, and I always paid attention to that. I, what is, I wonder what it is that makes that so special for people like you, myself, and thousands of other uh, chasers. Yeah, it's something I can obviously definitely relate to. And as long as, like you mentioned here, as long as I can remember, it's always been the weather. You know, you can talk to my parents. They're like, yeah, he's, there he was sitting in front of the TV all day long. <laughs> Should be outside playing and watching the weather channel. <laughs> Un unless, of course, there is storms in the area because you'll go out chasing. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the rest of uh, the Minnesotans out there as well. When there's severe weather, generally we all go to the to our front doors and we'll be on not we'll be outside looking at it come at us and i remember where i live now in saint michael uh that we were i was at uh in my house or looking actually at the end of my driveway and my neighbor at the time was across the street and we were watching this wall cloud very nasty looking business come through and he just looks at me and he goes nice knowing you <laughs> yeah, had a few of those moments before <laughs> and you know we we were talking uh, before we got on the air that, you know, between last summer and now for you, it has been kind of a dud, hasn't it? It has been. Yep. Um, you know, it's just been kind of a quiet couple of years, even before that. Um, you know, it's some would say the central Minnesota area is overdue for some type of mm -hmm. severe weather outbreak when or when that happens, who knows, but it is definitely something to pay attention to over the, the season here. Well, and that's partially why I wanted you on at this time of year. First of all, because I felt like that we were going to be in good shape of not really having to worry about some sort of uh, weather event happening uh, during this period. But you never know with it being yeah. April. But it is like, isn't it's like uh, Tornado Awareness Month anyway? Yep, it is um, Severe Weather Awareness Month um, for Minnesota itself. Uh, Severe Weather Awareness Week, I believe it was last week or the week before. Um, where each day the National Weather Service actually did special bulletins for all different aspects of severe weather um, and the different precautions to take um, through each scenario. That's, I mean, and 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 people, you know, I, I, I have a laugh because there's people like, they're just like, oh, yeah, whatever. And here I am along with you and, you know, other people are just like, we're watching a due diligence, you know, like we're just really paying attention to every aspect of it. And even like, like what you're saying about the Weather Channel, even when it's like, hurricanes and I, I folks i know there's no hurricanes yeah. in minnesota i'm not saying yeah. here uh but uh like when there's hurricanes coming through i'll watch the weather channel like from start to finish um yeah. on that event. I, yeah. I just can't get enough of it yeah they do that live coverage and you just start getting glued to it and you're watching yeah. it throughout the process absolutely now when you are uh going out and like you're 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 in full mode you're you got your vehicle um, and you're ready to go out, what do you have with you uh, to to kind of uh, be prepared, be safe, but also to get what you want to get out of it? Yeah, so if I am, uh, you know, if it's something I'm prepared for, like I know I'm heading out tomorrow, you know, I have my laptop, I have a video camera, 
um, to, to shoot my footage with. And then really one of the tools I use the most is my cell phone. There's some very yeah. good, good apps on there, um, especially how far technology is advanced nowadays where you can get the radar app, pinpoint GPS location. Um, I kind of use that on the fly. If you need something a little more in depth, that's when you know my computer can come in. I can pull up different forecast models and um, current weather conditions across that local area to really try to hone in on where I want to be. Now, in the heat of the moment, though, what it really comes down to almost is going by sight and going by what you see. Right actually happening in the clouds and and when you're doing that i i would imagine i mean i i think you know depending on what kind of chaser you are where do you want to be in correlation to where the storm is um it's a very good question and so it's in a traditional sense of a tornado i would prefer to be everyone may have different answers on this i try to stay to the off to the right of the storm or mm -hmm. to the a little bit out of the direct path of the tornado. One of the most important things um, is that chasers, no matter what, do not cross the path of that tornado. Because if something happens, as um, there's a video on YouTube from last year that you could probably find, some chasers got caught in some power lines and were ultimately hit by the tornado. Thankfully, nobody was seriously hurt. Um, but things can happen when you get in to certain situations. So you just have to be mindful of that. And it happens quick. Well, and I was going to say, I mean, at, at the possibility of getting what you want, because there there's pictures of tornadoes and then there's pictures of tornadoes, right? That there you want to be able to get or even storms or whatever it is you want to you really want to get something good because there's a beauty that's attached to all of this stuff. And yeah. if, if you do you ever have to and maybe this isn't a great question to ask. Do you ever have to kind of like kind of shake yourself out of it? Like, no. No, this if if I want to get to where I want to be, that's a little bit too dangerous. Yep, I try. That is definitely um, a case for me because I do try to be careful. I have been unintentionally closer than I would have liked to been before. Yeah, thankfully there's ways around it and to easily get out of the way. Um, but um, if you look at this one right behind me here, up on the <laughs> off on my other shoulder. Yep. You know that tornado across the road right in front of me but i was able to position myself safely um that's with it, you know maybe a quarter mile half mile down the road um i'm just gonna across, so. i'm just gonna i'm just gonna move in on you for those who are watching the uh the facebook feed that's that's beautiful that's a really nice and i thought you know at first you're, you're showing me the bigfoot crossing i'm like yeah you're <laughs> you're right in, you're in the right right uh show let's say uh you know and who knows if you get a bigfoot thrown at you because of a tornado i don't know <laughs> You never know. Uh, you never know. And that's that's the thing about it. It's it's um with with that and that's you know, I've done I, I would like to call it storm chasing light. You know, I, I do it on my own terms. I actually ended up buying a, a a kind of a piece of junk truck that I still have so that I can take it out and and not worry about it being hit by hail and stuff, but at the same time. I'm not going to get close to it. I want to, I want to be, you know, I want to be in the action, but not too close to the action. Yeah. It's a, not a bad idea to have a vehicle. You're not too worried about uh, smashing up with hail because I have destroyed a brand new car in hail before. So. Oh my gosh. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Uh, was this before or after you married Amy? Because I no, this know. is after was, <laughs> I came home that night. I said, I had a little, got a little hail damage on the car. <laughs> guess, guess what? Guess what happened tonight. <laughs> The, the main thing is that that you're that you're safe now yeah. uh not to, not to bring up other uh storm chasers but i do watch like reed timmer right. um do you ever do anything like uh that where you are streaming your your you just even just mm -hmm. driving to the storms and stuff i used to stream a lot of live footage that's where a lot of my um you know live interviews with the weather channel would originate from mm -hmm. um ultimately it became more work than what it yeah. was really worth for me to keep doing is a lot of work to keep the, the stream with high quality especially out in rural parts of the state or across yeah. the country and it yeah. just wasn't working as much as i liked and became more work and it was a distraction distraction ultimately so it's it's interesting too because even like even like storm chasing has you know especially and you tell me i guess over the past few years in particular it's become almost more high commodity where 
like you, I, I bring up Reed Timmer, but Reed Timmer also has like a, a ton of like uh, sponsors and stuff. What are, what are your thoughts on that? Is that, does that, does that sour anything or is it just not even a, even an issue? It's a very good question. Storm chasing has taken off um, significantly since even since I started, it seems like anyone with a cell phone now can yeah. storm chase and, you know, I, anyone that wants to get into it, I would encourage them to, you know, do your research and everything and get proper training um, through Skywarn and things like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it is definitely taken off a lot more. You see a lot more what they call chaser convergence, especially the further south you get into the yeah. plains, um, where you will literally run into traffic jams out in the middle of some country roads where the infrastructure simply cannot handle that type of traffic when you're on a muddy gravel road and there's a tornado barreling down on you. So. And, you're, and you're in gridlock. Yep. Do you, uh, are, are these people, are they doing it because they find it very interesting or are they doing it because they want some kind of fame from it? That's a, a tough question to answer because I have a hard time speaking for everyone. I think, you know, with. Oh, go ahead. Recent, try. I'll try. <laughs> with the recent, uh, you know, films that have come out, there is another new Storm Chasing film, Twisters 2. Yep. Going yep. out over the summer. Um with technology and social media the way it is nowadays, I think it just taken off as more of a mainstream hobby that, you know, maybe people didn't even think about 10, 15 years ago. And now more and more are able to get into it and it makes it a lot easier. Um, you know, I think, I think it's a little bit of both. I think the people, you know, even myself, there's nothing I enjoy more than getting my footage on the news. So, but, but you paid your dues as well. And you're yeah. doing, I mean, I mean, and, and I, I guess the reason why I asked the question mm -hmm. myself is because I, I see the parallels with the paranormal field that I'm in. Sure. You know, I mean, look, at, you, literally any, any moron can get a radio show now. I mean, <laughs> look at what you're on right now. You got me doing this. But I mean, it feels like everybody, when, even when I got into this, you know, 15 mm -hmm. years ago, people were like hungry to try to have their own TV show because they, they see it. And yeah. I think there's some kind of, uh, conceived preconceived idea the stuff that i'm doing the stuff that you're doing all you're doing is just going out and uh you know you know shooting clouds and stuff yeah. that's not hard i can do that but right. the reality is of how much work that is to get to be able to get that one moment that that actually is is that you can even not even not even commercialize just enjoy yourself yeah, it is a lot of work, and I can't tell you how many times I've driven overnight for 18 hours to get someplace yep. and then end up turning around and coming back home with, without anything. Without so. nothing. Absolutely. Yeah. Why don't we go ahead and do this, uh, Justin? Let's go ahead take our first break. When we come back, we have a lot more questions for Justin. There's some people that put some stuff in the comments. We're going to bring those up as well. Even Because I have Justin here, I want to tell a couple of my stories and hear more of his. You're listening to Ghost Box Radio on AM950. Are you one of thousands of individuals who know you have psychic abilities but don't know how to tap into your higher self? Refine Divine is an extremely gifted psychic medium who offers classes that can help you reach your goals. Refine Divine holds classes Monday and Thursday at our two locations and via Zoom. Classes consist of manifestation, learning psychic abilities, shadow work, and healing trauma. Refined Divine has helped thousands, and she can help you. This is Psychic Medium Deb. You can go to refinedivinepsychic.com. Greg Bakken here. Like you, I love good, fresh, delicious food. So I want to tell you about this treasure in Roseville called Maverick's Real Roast Beef. Maverick's has the best roast beef sandwiches I've ever had. Made fresh, every order. Add fries or onion rings dropped in the fryer when ordered, and you have a winning combination. Maverick's Real Roast Beef has a lot more than roast beef, so check out their website, maverick'sbeef.com, or check out their restaurant on Lexington in Roseville. Did you know that spiritual awakening is not all love and light? Surprise! Inner demons, ego deaths, and tower moments are on the horizon. But while life might hand you some harsh lessons, we've got the antidote to soothe your weary soul. Why not try a dragon's bloodbath or schedule a Reiki aura repair? With books, herbs, talismans, candles, and more, we put the Shazam in shadow work. Visit Magus Books at 1848 Central Avenue Northeast in Minneapolis or magusbooks.com. 
The Tilted Tiki, located in downtown Stillwater, helps you get your tropical tiki vibe on with a large selection of fantastic-tasting tiki cocktails served in unique and fun glasses, a menu of delicious food ranging from small bites, craft tacos, sandwiches, and more. Plus, don't forget they have live music Wednesday through Saturday nights. Located in downtown Stillwater, the Tilted Tiki is your tropical relaxation restaurant in Minnesota. Visit thetiltedtiki.com. Reach your highest level of consciousness and well-being with metamorphosisconnections.com. Metamorphosisconnections.com is an online directory of the best holistic and metaphysical practitioners to help you make your most informed choices. You can search metamorphosisconnections.com for classes, events, wellness and life coaches, plus metaphysical products and shops. You can also search for a wide array of healers from all modalities, including EFT, sound healing, energy healing, light therapy, ancestral healing, shamanic healing, reflexology, past life regressions, hypnotherapy, yoga, and more. And if you're not sure where to start, the search feature on metamorphosisconnections.com is tailored to help both those who know what they are looking for and those who are just starting. Come explore the possibilities for your higher self by visiting metamorphosisconnections.com. Their experienced practitioners can guide both beginners and those that are already on their spiritual journey. That's metamorphosisconnection.com, your link to direct you on your spiritual transformation. This Wednesday on Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bakken, tune in for one-question readings with the highly acclaimed psychic medium, Refined Divine, who can answer questions about love, life, and connecting with past loved ones. Get a potentially life-changing reading by calling. I can answer the question I've had all my life. Delve into the exceptional talents of Refined Divine at refineddivine.com and experience her live Wednesday at 10 p.m. for Psychic Medium Refined Divine on Ghost Box Radio. And uh, I hope that you have some time to come out and join us May 1st over at Billy's Bar and Grill in Anoka. We are doing Ghost Stories and Beyond. And I'm really excited about this one because uh, we're going to play some spirit recordings, uh, whether it's from us that we picked up over the years or if it's something that we just think is really good and we wanted to share with people. It's going to be a very uh, it's going to be a fun time. It always is. It's 630 May 1st at Billy's Barn Grill in the basement there. It's $10 a person to get in. That does not cover uh, food or drink. But just don't forget that. Wednesdays are half price burgers. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, we are very excited for that. We are talking with Justin Wenzel and we are talking about storm chasing and uh, this is a lot of fun. I'm, and people in the comments are really enjoying it. But Justin, I want to show you something. This is great for radio when you show a picture to somebody on the radio. Uh, I don't think I have the idea of radio yet here. For people who have been following me for a long time, they'll recognize this person. And uh, that is that is uh, my cat, Linus. And I just have to do a shout out because, uh, Justin, your wife, Amy, gave me Linus. That's correct. I hear stories about the cat and I seen him on your Facebook the other day. So. You hear stories about about him and you're like, God, I'm so glad he's not in my house. Um because he does try to kill me on a daily basis. Um, and, you know, that's actually one of the one of the stories that Amy had told me is that he, he'll he put out his paw to try to stop someone. And someone else, a previous owner of Linus, uh, thought that he was actually trying to hurt them. Oh. And uh, it's like, no, no. And, and Amy was like, no, that's not the case. Give me the damn cat back because you're just an idiot. Yeah. Um, so then I ended up with him. And I have to say, I am... I. I cannot say how grateful I am that um, Amy had uh, given me Linus because I have had seven years of uh, just a wonderful little pet that I've had a, a really good, a really good relationship with. So awesome. I just want to say that's, that's pretty awesome now. Uh, and I have a feeling you're not a cat person, are you? I am super allergic to cats. I just, I just get this from you that you're just, you're just like, you can, yeah, he's, he is absolutely not the right kind of cat that you want in a house if you're no, alone. You probably I want to sneeze now seeing this picture. Just pretty much. I can feel it through the computer here. <laughs> uh, so I want to go to the, the comments, if you don't mind. Um, <clears throat> and let's see. Uh, Emily asked the question, uh, do you guys think that thunderstorms, rainstorms just don't uh, stick around? They don't last as long as they used to? Maybe I'm crazy, but I swear they were doozies when I was a kid. What's your thoughts on that? 
Um, I think, you know, it's really tough to say because you could have one person that's like that just continuously gets bowed over with storms year after year or another person 50 miles away where they just seem to miss. Um, generally speaking, I think storms are, it just really depends on the area. Um, you know, we were mentioning that I think this area may be overdue for some type of major severe weather outbreak. It may be a matter of time. It may be several years. It's just hard to say. Um, it just depends on the type of storm and the type of conditions they have. If we have a hot, humid summer, you know, we may uh, see some, depending where you're at, some decent storms this year. I feel like when I, because over the last few years, and I, I you know, it's like, I, I, I have kind of a, I have kind of a dilemma, moral dilemma here. I, I want storms to come through. I want to experience them. I don't want anyone to get hurt. I don't want any damage to people's stuff, especially my own stuff. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I mean, there is something that's just so wonderful about being around thunderstorms and even having that whole like severe weather situation and everything that surrounds it for me. But I had noticed on certain years, it feels like every time a storm system, because you, you track the radar and it's coming towards us, it's coming towards like the St. Michael area, that it always seemed to have started to break up and like almost like miss the area and the, the band would still would be in two and just miss us. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't understand. That's like, you know, what are you doing this to me for? I think that's uh, what I call the Justin effect. When storms start getting close to me, they tend to just die off. Just <laughs> <laughs> that, that they don't want you to, they don't want to be photographed. By They're me. like, yeah, enough of this guy. We're out. <laughs> but it's, it happens all the time. Um, but <laughs> no, I think it's just like the situation of a circumstance and eventually, um, you know, one of those storms is going to hold together. Um, no, we don't live too far from each other. I don't know if you remember last October. Yeah. Um, it might have been late September. I can't recall. But there was actually a tornado right through Ray County that um, almost went unnoticed unless you were right in the areas over by um, BB Lake. That oh, wow. Our place are actually hit pretty hard. It's mostly tree damage and some outbuildings, but kind of a, a surprise one was right down the road from us and I didn't even know for three days till afterwards. I this is news to me. I don't I didn't yeah. I didn't know that actually. Yeah. Crap. I, <laughs> I remember I remember when I first moved in here and I've been here for, in here for I've been in St. Michael for nearly 20 years now. And my ex wife and I when we moved in, we were there was like massive severe weather coming through and we were being really smart by not paying attention to what was happening at all. We were la just laying up in our bedroom and the next day found out that a tornado touched down a mile away from us in Rogers mm -hmm. and killed a, a few people. I remember and that. It was just like, man, you know, that's that if if that's not enough, not enough to get people to kind of pay attention, you know, I don't know what is. Yeah. I mean, storm chasing can be a bittersweet thing, you know. Like I love to see the the extreme weather. And then on the same hand though, you hate to see people's property and lives, you know, sometimes change forever. Would would you say as a storm chaser? I I, I think I, I I do know the answer, but I want to I want to get this out there for people who want to do this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. If you're storm chasing, you don't ever go out without some access to a radar, right? You don't ever just do it by oh I'm going to look and I'm just going to drive towards where it looks dark and stuff. That you yeah. really need to have your radar. Absolutely, you need to have your radar at least, and not only have an understanding of radar presentations and what you're exactly looking for but also a, a good understanding of what's actually happening in the clouds yeah um, is, a, is extremely important because you could get yourself into a bad situation without those things there's there's a lot of possibilities that stuff will be hidden but from you based on rain or whatever else is, is happening yeah. or even debris right yeah especially the types of storms we tend to get in minnesota um what i call high precipitation supercells that tornado may be wrapped in rain. You might not even see it coming until it's already on top of you. It's frightening. Oh. It's so frightening. I think one of the most unfair things in the world, though, are tornadoes at night. Yes. That's just that's just crap. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I was driving through. I was bringing someone through to Arizona. And we were driving. Uh, and I wanted to actually drive through Oklahoma because I wanted to. Because we knew that there was going to be stuff there. And I'm, it's about 1030 at night and we ended up going through Kansas and it's, I'm at Pratt, Kansas, which is at the Southern end of Kansas. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's, there's storms off to the distance and I'm driving and there is lightning. And all of a sudden there's a silhouette of a cone. 
And I just, I mean, I was just, I mean, nowhere near me. Okay. There was nowhere near me, but I'm looking and I'm just like, I'm dumb. I'm like, Oh my God. I just, and, and the woman with me, she's just like, what is, what are you so weird about? I'm like, I just saw there's a tornado over there. There's a tornado over there. And we pull over and I pull out my radar and I could see exactly where it was, which made perfect sense to what I was looking at. And I could also see it was moving away from us, but there was another band coming in. And I'm like, we got, we really probably shouldn't be driving anymore tonight. We should probably get a a place to stay that we think is going to be safe because it's not worth driving out in that. Right. Even if you don't get hit by a tornado at night, any, you know, straight line winds, hail, all that stuff can, you never see it coming. It can be devastating. So, Absolutely. Let's uh, take, let's go back to some more uh, comments here real fast. Um, Let's see. uh, Chuck says that we've, we had, we've had freak windstorms that they were, that they say were mild tornadoes here in upstate New York, but not frequently enough for chasers. And I don't know really about the weather up in New York, to be honest at all, but it doesn't seem like they get a lot of a lot of the stuff, even though just I think a couple of weeks ago, I didn't like the Philadelphia area, Pittsburgh, uh, Philadelphia area get hammered by a lot of severe weather. And yeah, I believe I believe so. Um, I know I did hear something about that. Um, that uh, northeast part of the country is probably I've never been there. Um, I can imagine it's not a very easy um, place to chase geographically. Geography no. speaking, um, across the plains in the Midwest, you get a lot of what we call grid road networks where north, south, east, west, and you can see for 15, 20 miles. Um, there's just nothing there, which makes it extremely easy. There are some chasers who tend to they'll chase anything and everything. I'm not that type of chaser. I just don't even have the capability to really do that with, you know, wife, kids, and responsibilities. But, um, you know, they'll go through what's called Dixie Alley, which is another... Mm-hmm high high frequency tornado area during certain times of year and you got 100 foot trees on either side of you and you just waiting for that one spot to to get them and some guys love it so yeah and in that area uh a lot most of that area that i've run into because i've been out there a couple times not obviously not for storm chasing but you know if you ever see like uh roads in in like small small towns small villages in the uk like united kingdom it's very similar to that because it was all stuff that was uh founded by people from the uk and so it's 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 very dense you know for a lot a lot of like and curvy roads and stuff and it's just like that's what i love about being where we are and doing the you know when you're doing the chasing and stuff because it is you like you said you can see so much which is then there's nothing better in my mind than like seeing like dark clouds over like a, a farm field and the sun actually projecting on those clouds. So it's really dark, almost black. Yep. Uh, Chuck also asked you the question, uh, how has the use of tech changed over the years for you? Um, so when I started, you know, for me, myself, it hasn't changed all that much. The programs I use have gotten better. They've improved. Um, where I think there's a huge change. It was probably right about that time frame, be- right before I started where people were using paper maps, um, you know, the old Rand McNally out road Atlas, things like that yep. to get around. You need, they would need to go to different hotels or coffee shops and things like that to actually plug into the internet to get it. And now, you know, my vehicle's got Wi-Fi, my phone is Wi-Fi, whatever I need, I can usually one way or another connect to the internet to some extent, wherever I'm at. Do you have like a like a backup for the for the Wi-Fi, like something stronger than just like a hotspot or even like a, a paper map or something? Because it, stuff goes out, you know. I guess it, I don't yes, know. Yes, you can lose a GPS and you know your da- data service. And traditionally, no, I've never brought paper maps with me. A good friend of mine always has them. And we were out together one mm-hmm. time, and thankfully he did. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> And yet you still don't have it with you. It sounds like, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's easier said than done too. Yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, Linda says, I am fascinated with, uh, weather since having, uh, my birthday party in 1966 and watching it change the course of my day, the year that hurricane Carla blew over our house in Houston, Texas. I want your opinion on something, Justin. Mm-hmm. I think, naming snowstorms are stupid yes do you i mean do you agree 
I think it's silly, and it's, I think it's a you know a marketing tactic by a, a certain news news station. But um, yeah, you know, <laughs> if it works, it works. <laughs> <laughs> and well, and 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 that's the thing too is I mean I think that a conversation should be talked about about the sense uh, the sensationalization of some of these storms. Like how far do we go where we're uh, too careful? Where we're I'm someone who freaks out about uh, snow, like driving in in winter weather, very easily. So the first thing that people say about it, I'm already just like you know a a, a, a bowl of of pudding, but. It, some of the stuff that's coming out there, it's almost fear mongering, I think. It could be too. Yeah, I agree to a point. Um, you know, there's a lot of between views and clicks and all that stuff. It, you know, it, it definitely happens. There are definitely some rogue websites and social media pages out there who definitely do fear monger and they'll put out some crazy forecasts two weeks out in advance. Yeah. That just makes me scratch my head and wonder how they're even can sleep at night sharing some of this stuff and it it's 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 pretty ridiculous uh linda says it's probably the insurance company that started naming hurricanes hurricanes to me that's okay that's they're massive events snowstorms are a big deal don't get me wrong but Mm -hmm. they they come through so often that they do they i just they don't need names yeah you know the way i look at it a, a named hurricane you know such as the one in 1966 that's something you're going to remember forever. Um, where we live in Minnesota here, a named snowstorm, by the time it's over, you have already forgot what that's called. So Right. And, and the Rather, other, yeah. I feel like the only way that we remember mm-hmm. snowstorms are going to be like the uh, the one in uh, Halloween in 1990, was it 91? 1991, yep. And, and uh, that, I mean, it's the, it's the date because it's, it's yep. so, it was so amazing and so ridiculous. Yeah, um we will be talking about that one forever i think so. totally totally now have you have you uh been in a hurricane never have um i would not be opposed to it though but that takes a lot of preparation a lot of planning um and you know i have no experience doing that so that would definitely require doing that with someone as much more experience than that because you can really end up in a very very bad spot it, it's always interesting because the stuff that you watch on like the weather channel and you see like Stephanie Abrams out there and she's like being blown down the street. And you know, a part of me is kind of like, what's, where is the end game to this? I mean, what, what, at what point is it, does that enhance? I mean, I, I guess I'm the stupid one here because I said earlier, I watch it from start to finish, sure. but at the same time, I, you know, it's not because I want to see Stephanie Abrams get hit in the face with a, a stop sign that's blowing down the street. It's I'm curious to know what's happening in the area. Do you yeah. think do you think that some of this stuff, like the coverage, I mean, do you think it's a matter of people trying to keep up with the Joneses of stuff that's non weather related? You know, just trying to trying to get people to come in for viewership. There could be some instances like that um you know i'm going to speak on the storm chaser side of things um a lot of these people we all just share the same passion of extreme weather and yeah ultimately want to be want to live through it and um be there for it um there's a really good documentary on netflix like the name of it is drawing a blank for me right now um i believe it was in regards to hurricane ian a few years ago okay oh yeah Um, yeah and you know, that was actually a really good one. They actually were able to go back with the family and talk to them after the fact. So um, that was something I've also heard stories of people who were evacuated from their homes and they're seeing this different live footage, whether it's being streamed on YouTube or weather channel coverage or anything like that. You know, they were able to kind of have an idea of what's actually going on in their own neighborhoods or their homes. Yeah. Um, and even, be- even before they've been able to get back into their neighborhoods, they're able to see, you know, footage of what their area looked like. So, and some people were relieved by that. So there, maybe there is some benefit to it. And, and yeah, I would agree. I, I, I certainly agree with that. I guess my thought is, is like, sometimes I feel like that they, they put people in danger a little bit when it's the one-on-one, even though they do say we have a safe place where mm-hmm. we're safe. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm just becoming an old hen, you know, <laughs> and maybe that's all there really is to it. Um, I, yeah. Go oh, ahead. I was going to say the type of storm chasing I would do, um, you know, you're kind of, your your own your own self shooting your own footage it's you know, kind of can go where you want and yeah put yourself in whatever situation you feel comfortable with but um you know i think it even the hurricane chasing has become more popular over the last 
several years too. So I I love watching it. I love watching <laughs> it. Why don't Why don't we go ahead and do this? Let's go ahead and take our second break. When we come back, I want to talk tornadoes. I want to talk about tornadoes that you have seen. Um, and if once again, folks, if you have any more questions or comments, please put them in, and we'll get to them. This is a great conversation. You're listening to Ghost Box Radio on AM nine fifty. Are you one of thousands of individuals who know you have psychic abilities but don't know how to tap into your higher self? Refined Divine is an extremely gifted psychic medium who offers classes that can help you reach your goals. Refined Divine holds classes Monday and Thursday at our two locations and via Zoom. Classes consist of manifestation, learning psychic abilities, shadow work, and healing trauma. Refined Divine has helped thousands, and she can help you. This is Psychic Medium Deb. You can go to refineddivinepsychic.com. Greg Bakken here. Like you, I love good, fresh, delicious food. So I want to tell you about this treasure in Roseville called Maverick's Real Roast Beef. Maverick's has the best roast beef sandwiches I've ever had. Made fresh, every order. Add fries or onion rings dropped in the fryer when ordered, and you have a winning combination. Maverick's Real Roast Beef has a lot more than roast beef, so check out their website, maverick'sbeef.com, or check out their restaurant on Lexington in Roseville. Did you know that spiritual awakening is not all love and light? Surprise! Inner demons, ego deaths, and tower moments are on the horizon. But while life might hand you some harsh lessons, we've got the antidote to soothe your weary soul. Why not try a dragon's bloodbath or schedule a Reiki aura repair? With books, herbs, talismans, candles, and more, we put the Shazam in shadow work. Visit Magus Books at 1848 Central Avenue Northeast in Minneapolis or magusbooks.com. The Tilted Tiki, located in downtown Stillwater, helps you get your tropical tiki vibe on with a large selection of fantastic-tasting tiki cocktails served in unique and fun glasses, a menu of delicious food ranging from small bites, craft tacos, sandwiches, and more. Plus, don't forget they have live music Wednesday through Saturday nights. Located in downtown Stillwater, the Tilted Tiki is your tropical relaxation restaurant in Minnesota. Visit thetiltedtiki.com. Reach your highest level of consciousness and well-being with metamorphosisconnections.com. Metamorphosisconnections.com is an online directory of the best holistic and metaphysical practitioners to help you make your most informed choices. You can search metamorphosisconnections.com for classes, events, wellness and life coaches, plus metaphysical products and shops. You can also search for a wide array of healers from all modalities, including EFT, sound healing, energy healing, light therapy, ancestral healing, shamanic healing, reflexology, past life regressions, hypnotherapy, yoga, and more. And if you're not sure where to start, the search feature on metamorphosisconnections.com is tailored to help both those who know what they are looking for and those who are just starting. Come explore the possibilities for your higher self by visiting metamorphosisconnections.com. Their experienced practitioners can guide both beginners and those that are already on their spiritual journey. That's metamorphosisconnection.com, your link to direct you on your spiritual transformation. This Wednesday on Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bakken, tune in for one-question readings with the highly acclaimed psychic medium, Refined Divine, who can answer questions about love, life, and connecting with past loved ones. Get a potentially life-changing reading by calling. I can answer the question I've had all my life. Delve into the exceptional talents of Refined Divine at refineddivine.com and experience her live Wednesday at 10 p.m. for Psychic Medium Refined Divine on Ghost Box Radio. That's right. Psychic Medium Refined Divine is going to be here tomorrow. It's, it's a great time. I love it. I love it when uh, people are calling in, people are putting in their questions and stuff. You can put your questions in the comments. Don't forget, she also does mediumship live on the air as well. Uh, it's always a lot of fun. You got to call in, though, more than likely to be able to get through, but we'll try to get to everybody the best we can. That's going to be tomorrow. Please check it out. I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, what I am enjoying is this conversation right now with Justin Wenzel, and uh, we're talking about storm chasing and and the work that he's doing, which I mean, first of all, it, you know, it's people need to see this stuff because, you know, there's a lot of people that if they don't know how to do it, you shouldn't be out there to begin with. And people like you are showing us what what it looks like. And it's important that we know what nature looks like and what the weather looks like in certain situations. 
Absolutely. Um, now, some with Storm Chase and Lake, we already mentioned, it's great to you want to gain all the knowledge you can, go out with someone experienced if it is something you're looking into. Um, there is another program called Skywarn that is put on yep. by the National Weather Service. So people that do have an interest in severe weather, that would be a great starting point as well, where you can actually do storm spotting and you know even have an impact right from your own home when yep. you have severe weather rolling through your neighborhood and make a report that can potentially help people that are further down the path of those storms. It, it's like, uh, don't don't run if you don't know how to walk. Right, exactly. Just, just do the due diligence, take the time. Mm -hmm. It's all fascinating. It's all mm -hmm. immense fun. Now, I want to talk tornadoes. We we have about we have about uh, 10 minutes left here, and I want to talk about uh, tornadoes. You've seen a lot of tornadoes and stuff. Tornadoes is, is one of the most coolest, frightening, horrific, wonderful things in that, that nature gives us. Um, mm -hmm. Could you quickly tell us uh, what what the F standard are for tornadoes? I don't have the exact measurements. Sure, when that's fair. Measure yeah. off the top of my head. They are rated off the damage they cause. So you could have a tornado go through an open field. It could be three miles wide and doesn't hit anything but blades of grass. It's going to be rated a zero. Got it. So um, now you could, regardless of its width, when it actually does yep. touch down. Okay. Yep. And there are ways that they can measure the wind speeds now with radar and things like that. Um, but as they've always been rated, it was the F scale. Now it is enhanced through GETA scale, the EF scale. So it did change slightly on what they're looking for. Um, you know, zero being the least impactful, right? Breaking some tree limbs, maybe blowing some shingles off your off your roof. Where EF five is complete total devastation. Where you would have to be just about underground to survive something like that. Thankfully, those don't happen very often. Right. <clears throat> so, uh, so, so when you're when you're out chasing and you see a, a tornado, you can you can maybe give like an estimate what you think it might be, but you, you really don't know until mm -hmm. they come through and they do the they do the uh, the the kind of the recce of the situation. Correct. Yeah, the National Weather Service will come through and they'll do a survey after the fact. Um, usually within a day, maybe two days later, depending on the extent of the event, they'll have their official report out the, uh, the radiance. God, there's, there's really something about it. What is, what is your, do you have like a favorite tornado story? Um, I have two, I think okay. the one I want. So I did, um, I mentioned with you about Dodge city, Kansas. Yeah. That was one that was actually, uh, one of the first tornadoes I seen all up by myself is a fabulous time. One of the most prolific supercells, people still talk about it. It's called a cyclic supercell that just kept dropping tornado after tornado after tornado. Um, There's actually three on the ground at one time, varying, varying sizes. Um, that was one of my favorite storms. Now that was storm was shared with hundreds upon hundreds of other chasers. There's footage all over of that one. Um, the other favorite one of mine is uh, Stewart, Iowa. Um, that was a storm where I was, I did all my research, did my forecast exactly right, stuck to my gut. A lot of times you wanted to make some last minute changes and I stuck with what I said. I got to Seward, Iowa, stopped at Casey's to grab a slice of pizza, which is just something you have to do when you're storm chasing. <laughs> yeah. And um, sure enough, there goes a storm, starts to form. <laughs> um, I headed directly towards it before it was hardly a thunder shower. Um, watch that storm develop to produce the first wall cloud. Watched the first tornado touchdown on that one and was able to follow that tornado through its entire life cycle. Um, did very little damage, as you can see in the photo that we looked at earlier. Crossed the road right in front of me. I had some amazing footage from that one. Um, I was actually, I got picked up, unknown to me at the time even, um, by a local Des Moines a news station. I was using my footage live on the air to help pass that warning along, which, as we mentioned, uh, you know, sometimes people actually see in that tornado on their tv they're like oh this is real we need to go to the basement yeah cover versus how many times have we heard sirens and had tornado warnings flash on tv and nothing happened so that was um i would put that one as my career highlight wasn't the strongest tornado did very little damage thankfully um, but there's only a few of us that i know of that were on there um i know the other two guys for sure um they were on that storm so it was a, a treat i didn't have to share with too many people do, do you have a, are you part of a pretty close knit community of, of chasers? Uh, the storm chasing community is rather large. Um, there are a few people who I 
tend to that are more local here that I do tend to associate yeah. with more often um, than a lot of other people. It's a very large group um, full of all different kinds of personalities and missions and goals of what people want to do in storm chasing. So I do keep kind of tight with my local group here. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, what would you recommend? Because uh, Linda had put uh, a couple comments in. She had said, wow, dro uh, dropping multiple tornadoes. In, and then she also is like, that's scary when folks don't hear the alarms. For mm -hmm. us who are not, you know, don't know about the tornadoes because we're not driving down the road towards them or any severe weather, what do you recommend to keep people, like, prepared? I would especially if, as you mentioned nighttime tornadoes are not fair get a weather radio on um, their yeah. cheap at walmart 20 30 bucks um you can program it for your exact area so if you're sleeping in the middle of the night that thing will go off in the middle of the night it'll wake you up they're loud and annoying yeah um when you're out and about throughout the day make sure you have your push notifications enabled on your phone um because they will push um certain severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings directly to you if you're within the area um all important outdoor warning sirens you know they're great to have they're meant to be heard outside that's an old technology they still use it but if you're out at a soccer game or a baseball game um that's kind of more what they're meant for not to wake you up in the middle of the night no because when you when the sirens go off that means it's imminent it's happening right now whereas like you know the, being aware means that you might be like you know 25 even five minutes out makes a difference absolutely yeah five minutes can be make the difference of everything. and then and and not that I want to turn this into uh, Justin is our is our weather you know uh, guru here because you're you're going out chasing you're not necessarily doing the 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 uh, safety pitches here but once again it, it, you know like if if there if there is a tornado coming you don't have a basement are you um are you, do you recommend like somewhere within the house like a bathroom get in a bathtub or something like that something that doesn't have windows um, for me if I was in that situation I. If I had no knowledge of weather, very little, I would put myself in the most interior room of your home. Bathroom, as they always say, is, um, it's usually going to be your safest spot. Yeah. Um, especially if you already have that warning coming across, sirens are going off. It's just not safe to hop in your car and drive down the road. Um, so it doesn't take a whole lot for those things to flip your car over or have a tree land on you or anything like that. Now this is, we have we have about uh, four minutes left, and this is an interesting question. I think it's worth asking, uh, given the devastating show of power these storms can have. Have you ever had any sort of? Uh, he's using the term paranormal experiences while chasing, be it ghosts, elementals, or even UFOs. I'll just even make it a, a little bit broader. Mm -hmm. Has there been anything there that you just made you go, well, that I've not seen something like that before while doing this? Um. I've seen some very crazy cloud formations. I wish I could share all the photos um, with you here. As far as paranormal goes, I have not seen anything like that. Um, I've seen cloud formations over. I've even been like, wow, what is that? And I really need to take a step back to evaluate what I'm seeing here. Um, the weather does some crazy things. So, And what does what does that mean? Does that mean like it's looking like somebody or is it just like just really odd looking or beautiful or whatever yeah so i'm thinking i have an instance i'm thinking of right now is it was two or three years ago it was southwestern minnesota we were watching the storm come in it was a very powerful storm i was a little nervous because we're right in front of it trying to stay ahead of it we were far enough away but you can as the storm's coming in it does what does called pull an inflow from the sure. warm human air in front of it and you could really just watch these clouds start condensing right off the top of the corn um just feet above and it was one of the craziest things i've ever seen um outside of actual tornado so that was something very interesting that is that is really cool uh i've you know i i i'm sure you understand the audience that i have on on the show so some of these might you know to me these are not strange uh answers mm -hmm. but they might be a little bit different for you uh, emily said the last time i saw a ufo was right after a nasty storm um, and i've heard of things like this um you know Perhaps they're attracted to all the electricity in there. There's, I couldn't even tell you how much electricity is in some of these thunderstorms. That could be something that perhaps would attract certain things like that as well. So it is interesting, and and I I, I like the the possible idea of it attracts them because they're certainly not going to start them because we can see how storms start. We were you know you're you and 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 meteorologists they're all tracking that the whole time mm -hmm. and it starts from nothing into this so and you can see it days in advance that there is high probability 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's really interesting how, uh, how that, how that is now, is there anywhere that you would like to go that you haven't to do any of any of this, uh, you know, research and investigating? Um, you know, I've been from every state from North Dakota, all the way to Texas and Minnesota and pretty much every state in between. Yeah. It's kind of the severe weather playground for lack of a better term. And that's where I like to hang out if I can. So now how can people follow you? Um, I am not super active on social media. I do have a YouTube page. Um, I can have my wife share the, the link in the comments. That's fine. And, 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 and she works. can also send it to me too. And I can put it into Perfect. our other stuff as well. Absolutely. Yep. I'd love to be able to do that. Perfect. I'll have her do that right now, actually. You, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta do some social media. I know it's evil, but I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get yourself out there in that regard, because I think there's a lot of us who would love to see what you're doing, Absolutely. what you're seeing. But yeah, the YouTube stuff very much is, it will be great. And it, it's videos of, of, uh, of what you've captured and stuff. There's quite, I was actually going through it the other night and there's quite a few of my highlights that are all throughout there. So that's fantastic. I absolutely love it. You know, uh, this has been fun. I hope you had a good time tonight, Justin. I, I know that was you kind of probably like, why is he asking to be on? But I, I hope you enjoyed it. No, it was, it's been great talking to you. So thank you. And um, I'd be happy to do it again, maybe uh, next spring. I would love that very much, too. Everyone, thank you, Justin. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have on Refined Divine with One Question Readings. Everyone, have a good night and take care.